In this series of videos, you'll learn about how self-regulation and other psychosocial factors relate to our adoption and maintenance of health-related behaviors and weight outcomes. This video will cover our third topic learning objective, which is to recognize how emotion regulation strategies can impact weight-related behaviors and outcomes. One important aspect of self-regulation that we can consider is emotion regulation, which refers to the process by which individuals influence which emotions they have, when they have them, and how they experience and express their feelings. Emotion regulation can be automatic or controlled, conscious or unconscious, and may have effects at one or more points in the emotion production process. Let's first think about what emotions are. They are the intersection of our feelings, thoughts, and actions that help us assess the meaning and effective significance of the events that we experience. In general, our emotion regulation strategies fall into five broad categories. Situation selection, situation modification, attention deployment, reappraisal, and response modulation. We'll talk about each one of these in more detail and think about examples of each that have implications for our weight-related behaviors and health outcomes. Situation selection occurs when we select situations to manage our emotions. We often choose to enter or avoid situation based on our past experiences. One example of this could be a woman who wants to lose weight, so she joins a gym and hires a personal trainer. However, during her first experience, the trainer is very hard on her and the other people at the gym make her feel judged and self-conscious. She chooses not to return to the gym and cancels her future appointments with the trainer so she won't have to have the same terrible experience in the future. Alternatively, say someone walks by a bakery every day and the delicious smells and sights always draw them in to buy a treat. This is not in line with their dietary goals, so they decide to use an alternate route to reduce their temptation and their intake of baked goods. As you may have already noticed, the first example is not aligned with our health goals, but the second is. So these strategies can either support or counter our health promotion efforts, and the key is to select and practice strategies that allow us to effectively regulate our emotions in ways that are also aligned with our health goals. Situation modification occurs when we change the current situation to manage the emotions that we anticipate experiencing. So this is when we behave or react in a way that aims to avoid a specific emotional response. For example, say we have a mother who expresses concern to her daughter about her recent weight gain. The mother is just trying to help support her daughter, but the daughter might feel embarrassed or annoyed by this concern. One way the daughter can modify the situation so she doesn't feel that embarrassment or annoyance would be to roll her eyes and blow off her mom's concern, telling her mom that she's too controlling and intrusive. Alternatively, the daughter could listen to her mother's concern and embrace the situation in a way that allows her to take control and avoid embarrassment by asking her mom for the support she needs. The first response would not necessarily support the daughter in improving her health status, but the second likely would. Attention deployment occurs when we manage our attention to manage our emotions. This is when we use strategies like distraction or concentration to manage the emotions that we feel. A classic example of attention deployment is procrastination. When we know that we have to do something, but we avoid doing it because it feels hard or stressful, we choose to engage in more pleasurable activities because they feel good and because it is hard to get going on what we feel like we have to do. In contrast, we use attention deployment when we quote, keep our eye on the prize. This is a way of getting ourselves motivated to initiate and sustain a behavior by not focusing on the behavior itself, but focusing on the end goal that we want to achieve. Thinking about how good it will feel to go for a run can help motivate you to actually go for that run. And when the run gets hard, focusing on the finish line rather than the discomfort you feel can help you get through to the end of the run. Procrastination often does not align with our health goals, whereas keeping our eye on the prize does. Reappraisal occurs when we reframe a situation to manage how we feel. We change the way we think about something so we can feel differently about it. 
Let's say a patient is diagnosed with prediabetes and her physician recommends that she lose weight to improve her blood glucose regulation. To avoid feeling scared or overwhelmed by this diagnosis, the patient may reframe it by saying it's no big deal and not something she should be worried about. She may reason that her grandfather had diabetes and still lived to be 90 years old. On the other hand, she could reframe this diagnosis as a great motivator for action to make the health changes she's been wanting to make for a long time. The first approach would likely not motivate change, but the second would. Finally, we may engage in response modulation, which occurs when we attempt to alter our emotions after they occur. This could include drinking or taking drugs as a form of self-medication when we feel depressed or anxious or could be when we use yoga or exercise to reduce stress. The first strategies may be effective, but will likely lead to other problems and health issues. Rather, use of healthy forms of response modulation, such as deep breathing, yoga, and exercise, can help us manage our emotions while also supporting our health goals. Hopefully by now, this point is abundantly clear. Our emotion regulation strategies contribute, both positively and negatively, to our wellness because these strategies shape our mental health, our relationship quality, our eating behaviors, and our stress reactivity. In addition, research suggests adverse emotions and psychological distress can contribute to obesity. Depression and anxiety are both related to increased risk for obesity. This may be explained by emotional overeating and reduced physical activity, as well as other effects of adverse emotions and psychological distress on our health behaviors. But also note that obesity may negatively affect our mental health, so the association likely goes both ways. Body dissatisfaction and binge eating disorder are both associated with obesity and worsen as weight status increases. In addition, psychosocial stress, either due to general life stress or stressful life events, is also associated with weight gain and obesity. So overall, there are clear links between our emotion regulation skills, our mental health, our experiences of psychosocial stressors, and our weight outcomes. And these are all important targets for our intervention efforts. So let's wrap up with some key takeaways. Emotion regulation is one type of self-regulation, and emotion regulation strategies can affect our weight-related behaviors and weight outcomes. We reviewed five types of emotion regulation, situation selection, situation modification, attention deployment, reappraisal, and response modulation. We can think of examples of each of these that are more or less aligned with our health goals. Our challenge is to help the people with whom we work to find the emotion regulation strategies that allow them to effectively regulate their emotions in ways that also promote health and wellness. That's all for this video. Thank you for learning with me.